Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Hello, welcome to Atom Radio's Drive Time podcast. This is Mark Denham, funny enough, the host of Atom Radio's Drive Time. We're on Monday to Friday on atomradio.co.uk, on from four until seven. You can also listen on TuneIn on your mobile phone. If you've got iTunes, you can use iTunes Radio. And if you've got a smart speaker, I'm pretty sure that will accommodate your desires as well. On the way in episode 28 of the podcast this week, an unusual world record, the uh, the 10-year challenge corrupts up a couple of times in the uh, photo category, as does photo bombing this week as well. Some uh, fantastic photo bombing. If you do use WhatsApp, an important warning that you should be listening to, and also a ridiculous organisational name. All that and more coming up for you in the next little while on the podcast. Settle back and enjoy. Thank you for checking it out. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe. Here it comes, the best bits of this week's Drive Time. Atom Radio Denim, Denim. It's Mark with you until 7 o'clock tonight. There is an official Guinness World Record for the steepest street in the world. Sounded very Jeremy Clarkson, didn't I? In the world. The, uh, the steepest street in the world currently is in New Zealand, which has a gradient of 35%, one in 35, which is quite a steep hill, let's be honest. There's now a place in Wales that believes that they have a steeper gradient than that. They believe they have a 36% gradient, one in 36. In order to qualify, the street has to be paved, it has to be a public thoroughfare, and it also has to have houses on it. So it, it qualifies for all that. And this, uh, the residents of this street in Wales have now sent off all of their details to the, uh, the Guinness World of Records in order to try and have their record ratified as being the steepest street in the world. Now, there are, I guess, some, um, there are some, you know, strange records. There are some, you know, there are the obvious ones, aren't there? Like, you know, the fastest running man and, you know, like the, the fastest 147 in snooker, the, uh, you know, things like that are obvious. But then there are some really, really random world records. And really... Who cares who's got the steepest street in the world? Who cares? Apparently, the people of Wales and this little um, street in Wales. I'm not even going to attempt to tell you where it is because um, I can't say it. It's Welsh. But uh, the people of Dunedin apparently also care because they're not happy that they might lose this record. I'm just thinking, all right, like because you can have a record for anything random, I'm just wondering whether I could have a record for perhaps the longest radio link ever by somebody called Mark Denham on Atom Radio. If I just keep talking, I'm sure I could do it. Whether or not that would officially qualify as a record, I don't know. But given there's only me here called Mark Denham on Atom Radio, I don't think anyone's ever going to beat it, are they, if I just keep talking? Drive time with Mark Denham. If you are a fan of McDonald's, a startling revelation has come out. And this has really stunned people. You know when you get your, um, your McDonald's chips, they come in the little carton thing, don't they? Well, there's a flap on there that you can fold back and you can put the sauce on there. Now, interestingly, if you get if you go to McDonald's a lot, you know what the sauce looks like. If you go to McDonald's, they've um, got some fries where you can just see the top of the gold and arch on there. All right. But the ketchup they're using isn't McDonald's ketchup. Definitely isn't. So they're probably taking it home to uh, take the perfect photo. But yeah, there's a little flap at the top of the fries box. If you fold that back, then that is apparently where you can put the ketchup and it will turn into a, uh, a plastic plate. Um, except though, however, uh, you are going to get a slight problem. Though. If it bends back, you're going to get covered in ketchup, aren't you? So yeah, do it, but do it very carefully. And perhaps like, you know, wear a huge like vest of napkins or something just in case it does snap back on you. Mark Denim Denim Tuesday and you got Mark with you selfies or indeed even photos doesn't necessarily have to be a selfie does it but photo bombers both intentional and accidental do crop up everywhere and I'm looking at one here there's a family photo everybody's nicely posed on chairs in the front row the ladies and at the back the gents are standing and the two golden retrievers are in the photo you can imagine what the golden retriever male is doing golden retriever male just thought you know what a good opportunity don't worry about the photo it's fine 
Uh, but then there's somebody else who's pulling a ridiculous face in the background of somebody else's selfie. Uh, a, a lady has posed with her ice cream with the dog in the background thinking, hmm, I could have that. I could have that. Uh, a man has taken a selfie of him eating a barbecue chicken wing. In the background of that is another man who shaved his chest hair into kind of like a, uh, a Batman logo. And that's that. Another lady, a young lady, checked her um, photo or shared her photo with a picture of her dad in the background and just a pair of grey shorts and um, nothing else. A pair of grey shorts and that's it. Um, or three's a crowd. As somebody else's photo bombed a delicate kissing scene. It's a little bit uh, crowdy, isn't it? Or perhaps uh, a lady who's posted a picture with a kitten scaling her leg. If you've ever had a kitten, that's so painful when they do that. Got to get up, got to get up. Ah, use the claws, climb up. So, so, so uh, painful. If ever you've been photo bombed, tweet it at UK Atom Radio and I'll share the best ones. Drive, 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 drive time with Mark Denham. Just one of these selfies, all right? One of these um, selfies. A lady is trying on a pair of glasses in some form of market. Around this market, there are loads and loads of mirrors and they're in the background of her photo. So she's trying on the glasses, you know, like posing, share, showing off the glasses for her photo, smiling. In the background is a man most blatantly checking out her bum in the mirror. And you can see it. He's caught, well, thankfully not red-handed because that would be going too far. But he is definitely caught blatantly catching, uh, checking out her bum. So, yeah, if ever you are uh, trying to photobomb someone unintentionally, make sure you don't get caught. There's another helpful lesson for you. Drive time with Mark Denham. Online radio, streaming from Slough. This is Atom Radio. That is uh, Queen, a crazy little thing called Love, and Robbie Williams, I Just Want People to Like Me. That's a huge issue, isn't it? In 2019, and indeed last year, it was a huge issue. People are so desperate to be liked in this day and age. Um, chuck it off. Get rid of it. If people don't like you, people don't like you. There's always going to be uh, people that don't like you. That's just life. As long as the people that mean something to you like you, you're winning. That's all that matters. If other people don't like you, jog on is my message to them. Drive time with Mark Denner. I'm just imagining myself right now as a pudding tester. Yeah, I sat here thinking, hang on, what would I have? I'd love ice cream and coffee cake. Maybe a bit of chocolate cake. But, you know, if we had either chocolate ice cream or mint chocolate ice cream, I'd be perfectly happy. If we had coffee cake, I'd be perfectly happy. As long as it hasn't got walnuts on it, don't like it with walnuts on it. But that'd be me, wouldn't it, as a pudding tester? Here, test this. Uh, no. Can I have a bowl of ice cream instead, though, please? It'd just be me, wouldn't it? And then, you know, we'd be deciding, like, you know, well, before we eat the pudding, shall we have dinner? And what sauce shall we have with it? It'd be an absolute nightmare for me to be a pudding tester. And I guess also being a pudding tester, you must be prone to um, gaining weight, shall we say, in the nicest possible way if you're eating all these desserts. Gotta happen. Wednesday afternoon, if you use WhatsApp, all right, WhatsApp encrypts the messages you send so they can't be read by anyone except the person that you send them to. So if you have a conversation, just a one-on-one conversation, you and they can read the messages and apparently no one else. Uh, If you have a group conversation, obviously you and the members of the group can read the messages, no one else. Some users claim though that the bug will let them see other people's personal messages on WhatsApp. This is something to look out for, definitely. The alleged flaw was spotted by Amazon employee Abby Fuller, who tweeted, logged into WhatsApp with a new phone number today and the message history from the previous number's owner was there. So yeah, if you change your phone number, you're going to have to delete all of your um, all of your message history before you change your phone number. Otherwise, that could be a problem, couldn't it? That could be a problem. Um, you know, somebody's got a brand new number, which is somebody else's old number, and all of their messages are now on there to be seen. That's all. Imagine, imagine, like, if you were, um, you know, if you'd said some stuff that you didn't want anyone to see. Oh, dear. Drive time with Mark Denny. Nelly, hot in here on Atom Radio, which makes me think, you know, in the winter, you always get somebody, don't you, who turns the heating up to like, you know, 30 degrees and the rest of you are like, (laughs) it's boiling in here. Well, you see, the simple solution to that is right. In the winter, if you get incredibly cold, you can put on an extra jumper. 
or something, you know, to keep yourself warm, sorted, right? So therefore the heating doesn't have to be uncomfortable for everyone else just because you are cold. Same in the summer. If you are, again, incredibly cold because the air conditioning's on, put on an extra jumper. And then everybody else doesn't have to be, you know, boiling because you can't handle the weather. Sorted. Drive, 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 drive time with Mark Dillon. Latin Radio. It's seven after six. It is Wednesday evening. It's Mark with you until seven o'clock on the big drive home. Tidal, you know, the music service is being investigated after its allegedly inflated Beyonce and Kanye West streaming numbers by tens of millions. Wow. There's a criminal investigation in Norway for allegedly inflating the streaming counts. The uh, Norwegian financial publication, which I'm not going to attempt to say the uh, name of, first reported on Monday that the Norwegian National Authority for Investigation and Prosecution of Economic and Environmental Crime, known as Okikrim, that's quite good, isn't it? Okikrim, is probing the music streaming service based in Norway. The agency confirmed the fraud investigation in a press release, adding that three Norwegian music companies had filed criminal complaints against Tidal last August. Uh, from that, I'm just thinking, imagine if anyone asks you, where do you work? For me, where do you work? Atom Radio. Done. Simple. Where do you work? McDonald's. Boots. Uh, you know, simple. Imagine if you ask somebody, uh, this, this, this geezer, I'm going to try his name now. Dagens Neringsliv. That's probably not right. But imagine if you ask old Dagens, where do you work, mate? I work for the Norwegian National Authority for Investigation and Prosecution of Economic and Environmental Crime, or otherwise, Oki Crip. What a mouthful. Yeah! Mark Denham, Denham. First day's drive time. You see everybody's doing this 10-year challenge where you post a photo of you 10 years ago and a photo of you today. I, um, it was suggested to me yesterday that I should do it. And I thought, oh, uh, um, uh, shall I, shan't I, shall I, shan't I? And I went and I looked at the photo from 10 years ago and I put it next to one from today and I thought, oh, I'm not doing that, not doing that. Um, for me, 10 years ago, I was uh, 16 stone and 10 years younger. Now I'm uh, a lot lighter and also 10 years older. So I don't particularly like that, if I'm honest. I'm not a big fan of that three-year challenge at all. 10-year challenge even, but there you go. You're seeing some funny ones though, aren't you? Like, if you look on Instagram, you see some funny ones of people that are like, say, 20, and you get a picture from 10 years ago when they're 10, and you're thinking, ah, yeah, hard to recognise you now, isn't it? The worst thing about this challenge, all right, the worst thing about this uh, 10-year challenge is when you see 10 years ago, we didn't have Snapchat. So photos were photos 10 years ago. So um, even if, say, you were, I don't know, 25 and 35, let's say, so there wouldn't have been that much change in you because you would already have been an adult, and at 35, you're not really that old yet either. So there's not that much change between 25 and 35, let's say. You see people who have posted their uh, photos from 10 years ago, and it's a photo of them 10 years ago. That's it. Maybe a selfie, perhaps a group photo or something. Maybe someone even took it on a digital camera 10 years ago rather than the phone. But then you see their one now, and it's got like dog ears on it, for example, or bear ears or something. Or, you know, it's a heavily, heavily Snapchat filtered. And you're thinking, well, you just cheated. That is just cheating. Why didn't you just post a picture of you now? If you are going to do it, at least do it properly. If your 10 year ago photo isn't Snapchat filtered, and it won't be because Snapchat didn't exist 10 years ago, don't filter your 2019 photo either. Put two comparable photos next to each other. Drive, 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 drive time with Mark Dillon. 5.20, Thursday afternoon. The big drive home across the whole world on atomradio.co.uk. On TuneIn for your mobile phone, iTunes Radio as well, and your smart speaker too. I did see a uh, video which went up on um, Snapchat. I know on Twitter yesterday. And it was a Scottish lady trying to get her Amazon Alexa to play a song and it just didn't understand her and she's like she's not happy about this but to be fair i can understand because if you are speaking in english it's expecting english isn't it and there are some uh very strong regional dialects you know particular parts of scotland have a very strong regional dialect newcastle for example liverpool they also have a very strong regional dialect it's no wonder i guess that amazon sometimes the alexa and other smart devices well like siri 
uh, the Google Assistant all struggle. It is sometimes a worry, not a worry, it's sometimes you know, understandable that this happens. But yeah, if you are someone with a broad accent, then um, either don't buy a smart speaker or take elocution so one speaks posh like one should. Drive time with Mark Denny. A big drive home for a Thursday on atomradio.co.uk and you got Mark with you up until 7 o'clock. The um, Poundland rings, these engagement rings from Poundland, are getting a, a lot of thoughts at the moment or a lot of uh, discussion anyway. Nothing quite says I love you, does it? I love you, I want to marry you, um, I want to spend the rest of my life with you and I spent a pound to prove it. That's, that's going to go down well. Yeah! Mark Denham, Denham. It is a quarter past four. You got Mark with you on the big drive home. Everybody is doing the uh, 10 year challenge. We did mention this yesterday, didn't we? Everybody's doing it except me. I am not doing it. I refuse to do it. Uh, there have been some funny ones around, though, on the internet. Jimmy Cranky, for example, 10 year challenge. And on the other side of that is Nicola Sturgeon, the leader of the uh, SMP, on the other side of that. That is quite funny. I have seen uh, a picture before of Nicola Sturgeon's mum compared to Elton John, but no, on the 10-year challenge, it's Jimmy Cranky and Nicola Sturgeon. Also, the one that everybody is sharing at the moment is the uh, the Freddo bar, 15p in 2009 versus £87 in 2019. It's probably not far off the truth, really, is it, eh? I mean, if you imagine another five years, it's going to be a lot of money, isn't it? It'll be a pound, pound fifteen for a... Um, Fredo bar or something ridiculous like that. Drive, 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 drive time with Mark Denham. A woman tried to smuggle, and this is quite brave, 24 gerbils by stuffing them up her skirt. She was trying to sneak the creatures past a customs port on uh, a Taiwanese island, but she put them all up her skirt. Now, that's quite brave because I've had pet gerbils and they're quite, they're quite friendly. When I was little, I had uh, pet gerbils that are quite friendly. But the thing is... You know, like depending on how friendly they are, how old they are, and therefore how much tameness you've given them, they could easily bite. And I would imagine having a gerbil bite up a lady's skirt would not be the most pleasant thing that could possibly happen to you on a Friday. Atomradio.co.uk So there we go. Another week's episode of the Drive Time Podcast. Thank you so much for checking it out. Uh, no video intro again this week. I'm still not feeling my best. You can probably tell in my voice, but uh, hopefully we'll have that sorted and uh, we'll get the video intro back as well for next week with a bit of luck. Touch wood, fingers crossed and all that. I'm just thinking though, uh, having as someone who did have gerbils when I was younger, when you are taming them, if they do bite, and they don't bite often, but if they do, that hurts. Imagine stuffing one up your, well, as a lady, I can't, but imagine if you were to stuff one up your trousers as a bloke. You would be in trouble. Drive Time returns on Monday afternoon, 4 o'clock UK time until 7 o'clock UK time. You can find me on atomradio.co.uk, on TuneIn, on iTunes Radio, and on your smart speaker. As always, thank you for checking out the podcast. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, then you'll be able to enjoy episode 29 when that drops next weekend. Have yourself a fantastic week. Uh, Listen live if you can. If not, we'll catch you back for another podcast next weekend. Denim, denim.